everyone. Good afternoon. Where you are sitting right now, it is awesome um, to see some familiar names and faces and some new names and faces. Um, as Naomi said, I'm Beth Koss. I am the Director of Educational Programs with Lesson Picks, and we've been doing a series. This is the third of three, um, so be sure to catch the recordings if you had not Oh, thank you, Naomi, for posting the links to the slides. Uh, if you have not seen the other two, although we need to re-record the literacy one because I had some serious technical issues that day. My internet kept going out. So we'll, we, you can wait on that recording until I get it re-recorded. Um, but a series of, of, of three different um, uh, lesson picks uh, uh, focused um, sessions. And this one is on math. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so you guys can see what I'm seeing. And uh, and we'll get started. And please feel free to um, put your questions in the chat or if it's more comfortable for you to um, make sure I've got the chat up. If it's more comfortable for you to, um, to uh, get on mic and ask a question, you are more than welcome um, to. And yeah, and make sure you grab the slides. I'm gonna veer out of the slides periodically to actually go into lesson picks, but there's a lot of great resources linked in the slides. And I am ready for spring. It has felt spring-like in Maryland where I sit for the last few days. So I'm going for a nice spring themed um, session today. Um, I just want to remind everybody all of the amazing features in Lesson Picks. We've got, I need to update this slide because we're probably close to 80,000 images by now. That you've got custom, you can add custom images or create custom images. We have access to all of the LAMP Unity symbols. There's thousands, not thousands, hundreds. There's about a thousand, hundreds of templates in there, including not just for math, but communication boards and visual schedules and literacy and fine motor. We have a fabulous sharing center. So if the reality is that you do not have the time to make things, it's okay. There are probably over 50,000 resources in the sharing center. All of our resources can be um, uh, downloaded as a PDF for easy print resources or can be downloaded into PowerPoint and used with our interactive tools in either PowerPoint or Google Slides. We also have Microsoft Word integration and high contrast images as well. So just a few, you know, kind of things. So you know what, really, I said I'm going with a spring theme and learning really blooms with lesson picks. And these are just some of my favorite math templates. And I'm going to take you in and show you where they are. But the links, uh, I, didn't, I didn't link that multiplication one, but these two are both linked in there. And a lot of the links in the slide deck are to free resources but I'm gonna give you guys a code at the end so that anybody who's um, logged in today um, is able to uh, get a free two month license for lesson picks and be able to play and find things and, and see. And I'll talk about the cost, really inexpensive, but let's like, hop over into lesson picks actually. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and let's go right in here. So this is the lesson picks homepage. Um, as you can see, it is $36 a year. That's for an individual license and we do have group licensing available as well um uh, but you know it, it's we keep it really really affordable that's a, that's the most you're going to pay is that 36 dollars a year for an individual license i hop into our clip art um whoops i've been logged out it does log you out like when you are timed out but there we go now i'm back in i'm going to hop into our clip art tab and um, our clip art is organized in folders um, around categorical category, different categories, alphabet order. I'm just going to head into our holidays and seasons folder. Like I said, I am I am all in for spring right now, and I'm going to go into our spring folder, and I'm just going to grab some images, and we're going to make some math related resources with these. Okay, so let's go ahead and get a nice little robin, and maybe a beautiful butterfly, and we'll need, you know, a caterpillar, and perhaps a little chick. And the daffodils are blooming in my neighborhood right now, um, but we might certainly want some a garden and some other flowers in there. You know, I desperately need to start my gardening. Um, so I'm going to put a hoe in there. Um, let's see what else. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming the birds are, are starting to lay their eggs and we might be talking about bunny rabbits and 
Today, I'm gonna need my rain boots for sure because it is rainy. I do wanna point out, you're probably noticing that there are multiple images for many of the um, same words. Sometimes that's just to convey the meaning of a word differently, but it's also so that you can really um, ensure that your learners see themselves in the resources that you're creating. So you'll see images with individuals with different ages, different skin tones, different genders and all of that. So we'll get a nice spring picture in there and hopefully Hopefully we're going to be getting some, I live in, in outside of Washington, D.C., so hopefully we'll be getting some cherry blossoms on the tree very soon. Um, and uh, so I've got a few pictures in there. Oh, let's grab a watering can too. And I think I want, let's see, we've got some flowers in there, but I'm going to go ahead and do a search also. So let's get, I think we've got more flowers. I know we've got more flowers in, so there we go. So maybe I'll get, you know, some spring bulbs and all of that. And let's see if there's anything else that I might, might want to stick in there. Oh, so pansies. Pansies are a good one to put and tulips, good ones to put in this year. So you can add images um, by looking through the clip art or by searching for particular images that you want. So I do have a bunch of, I'm actually going to change my mind. I'm going to take that one out. And I'm gonna search for boot and you'll see why I'm changing my mind about something. I've got boots in there, but I'm gonna change it to boot because let's take that out. I'm just rethinking some things. I am gonna take my picture of this generic spring in there. I want things that are sort of like um, singleton items, right? Okay, so here we go. We've got nice set of, of, of pictures and um, I think I'm going to get, I'm going to go for the nest. We'll leave the nest in there. That's good. It's all, this works. Rainy. I think I'll take the rainy out there. All right. So I got 15 pictures, which is actually perfect for what I want to do. I'm going to go ahead and hit this create materials. And it's going to take me into the material types that we have. Now we've got loads of um, uh, over a thousand different templates. Um, and I've talked about some of them in the past. And there are lots here that are very applicable to math. But I am going to scroll on down to our math specific section. Now, there are other templates that definitely work for math. I mean, when we think about mathematical skills, we're gonna think about things like being able to do puzzles and visual spatial skills, um, even things like tic-tac-toe could be math oriented. But I'm gonna go down to our early math and science and I am going to make two of my favorite resources right now in super quick, actually, maybe I'll make three. All right, so we're gonna make clothespin counting cards. We call them clothespin counting cards because it's a great multi-sensory activity where you can be doing some fine motor work and clipping clothespins, but you could use it with your bingo daubers or you could mark it with a pen, right? There's more than one way, but we're gonna use the clothespin counting cards. I'm gonna go ahead and click next and it takes us into our picture details. And I've got all of the names that whatever the images were labeled in the image library. So far, everything looks pretty good. Um, I don't think I'm gonna change but I any of them, but I absolutely could change. Like if I wanna change this to Robin, I could absolutely change the text easily. I can also translate any resource that I create um, into any language that Google Translate supports. So if you're making resources, for um, students or individuals who um, are in multilingual homes or whose first language is uh, not English, it makes it really easy to translate resources so that um, individuals that um, for that to support that link those languages. I'm going to leave it in English right now. I'm going to hit my next button. I want you to notice I only have one of each thing in picture. I'm going to let you see where the 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 software does the magic. Um, I'm gonna click that next. And I've got here, I should have left 16. It's all right, we're good. Um, I'm gonna title this. I'm not gonna leave the title clothespin cards. I'm gonna call this my spring uh, counting and uh, counting cards. Let's do this. And I'm gonna, hmm, I'm gonna go ahead and go up to numbers up to 20 for this. Um, I keep, I, I need somebody to remind me. Somebody send me an email at beth at lessonpicks.com for my meeting today to ask our software people, can we please have this go up to 25 or 30 instead of ending at 24? Such a random number to end at. All right, beth at lessonpicks.com. Send me a reminder. I was talking with Naomi before about how I've had a lot of stuff, family stuff going on. And my executive function has gone you know, like is is just taken is tanked with that. So I need I need all the executive function help I can I can get. All right, 
We're going to click finish. Enough of my bird walk there. We're going to click finish and see how quickly and easily we can create a resource. Give it just a moment as it as it does its magic with these pictures. I do love the little thing. Just think about how long it would take by hand or if you were doing this in Google Slides or in another tool. So we'll give it a second. It should be it should be going, going, going. It's always slower when I'm doing this in front of people. There's something about that, right? It's always that way. I'm gonna give it one more second and then I'm just gonna X out of it because I know it'll be there anyway and it'll be just fine. Give it one more second. Uh... It's just spinning for me. It is just doing this just, just for me. And I know it's all good. So I'm actually gonna click this because I guarantee it's already done. And it's hanging out in my Your Lesson Picks tab. This is actually where you find everything uh, that you have ever created. And of course, why is Lesson Picks hanging up on me? Why are things being slow right now? I'm gonna turn my camera off just to make sure like it's not, shouldn't be an issue on my part here. And we're gonna, we're just gonna hit refresh really quickly. No tech issues today, please. I'm not in the mood. While I'm waiting for this, and I guarantee this is not a lesson picks issue, but an issue on my end. Um, while I'm waiting, I know we heard from where people are, but what's your roles? What are you looking, who are you looking for math resources for? Um, and we'll be able to talk about that in just a moment. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna try this one more time. Let's go back. Let's go over here. Lesson picks. This is not the this is not the moment for tech problems to happen. All right, we're gonna give it. I know I restarted my computer. We're gonna take a deep breath and be just fine. Parent. Oh, hi, Kathy. I think your name sounds familiar too. I love it when I've seen people more than once. I love that families and parents. Um, are taking advantage of this. All right, we're going to try this one more time. We're going to go here. There we go. Life is better, whatever was hanging up. So the Your Lesson Picks tab, which is when you log into your Lesson Picks account, Rebecca um, works with students. Hi, Rebecca. Um, and another North Dakota person, right? Like I'm remembering, yep, North Dakota. We got a couple of North Dakota, North Dakotans. The Your Lesson Picks tab is where you land when you log into your account. And just so you know, all of your materials always live right here. So I'm going to make sure, yep, there's my, there's my resource right there. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. Um, and let's go ahead and download this. And so Dana is an SLP, neurodiverse population. Perfect, K to fourth. You're going to love everything you see here. So we're going to take a look at these closed pin counting cards and see how the magic happens. So let me grab this and pull it over here so everybody can see it. All right, there we go. So now remember, I just had one of every picture in my tray, but look how the program made multiples, right? So now, and then notice how there's three possible answers, one correct and two foils. And the foils are appropriate to what the numbers are. So as we get higher up in numbers, right, where I've got... Um, I've got my, I had to do some quick, I had to do some quick uh, subitizing here. I have 10 of my trees, my flowering trees. Um, it's going to give me reasonable answers, right? It's not going to say 10 and one. It's, it's, it, it's going to make the task appropriately challenging um, for, for those learners, right? And so we've got this great counting activity for numbers up um, up to 20, ready for you all to be able to print. Um, so super easy, super quick. Now I've got these images in my tray, so let's keep working with them because once you've got pictures in your tray, you can do a lot more with it. So I'm gonna hit that create materials button again. And I'm gonna head right back on down to our math. But this time I am gonna make um, some, we remember we made close pin counting cards, but now let's, uh, let's make some math playing cards. So those close pin counting cards are a great activity, maybe in a student's work box, something that students might be doing individually while you're working on small group. Maybe it's great to send home for homework and for parents to be able to use. But let's talk about something where we could be interactive and a game. And so let's make some math playing cards. 
So I'm going to go ahead and click next. I've got those same images in my tray and notice how it held that I changed that from bird to robin It held that. So if I made any changes to it, it would I'm going to click next again. And we're going to call this our spring playing cards. And the number of cards, uh, let's do, it's really just a matter of how many cards. We'll do 16. Um, and do I want the operation cards? So let's say yes. So we might be able to work on a little higher level math as well as um, just number sense and, um, and basic, uh, uh, basic understanding of math. Um, I want, what colors do I want? You know, maybe I'm going to go for those are kind of like Uno-y colors, but I'm going to go for maybe some more spring kind of um, colors instead. So let's go for that. So I can change that up if I want to, um, just to make it however I want. And I'm going to go ahead and click Finish. And let's take a look at what we got here. So now, again, we're taking this to something that maybe we can have a couple of um, peers do together, play a game, maybe a group of four, um, something that a family, you could send home for families. This might be great for family math night. I don't know if you guys do that in the schools that you're in, um, but when I was, uh, I was an assistant principal of an elementary school um, before I came on board with Lesson Picks a few years back, and um, we did a family math night every year where we'd have all sorts of math games and math activities. And of course, it's taken a moment to generate that, but we're just going to wait it out for a second and hopefully not have any of the issues that I had before. So we'll give it one more second. Some of our things are going to take, they usually don't take this long. I promise. I'm, I'm not quite sure why we're having some, you know, slow issues today, but we're going to, we're going to just stick with it. I'm actually going to go right over here and go into lesson picks. I'm going to let that keep going. I do not know what my issues are today. While we're waiting for that, we're going to go back over here and we're going to do a little bit more look at my slide deck and then we'll be good. Um, another really awesome, now I had taken you before into the some of the math templates, but like I said before, it's not just the math templates that you can use. So this template is actually our themed picture template. And what I did is it, the themed picture template gives you a place that you can add images. So it gives you fun backgrounds like a flower, a butterfly, a mitten, a snowman. We've got a whole bunch of different ones based on seasonal themes or themes that you might be doing. Yes, absolutely. Let's add those. I'm going to put that right in the chat. There's the link to the um to the slide deck. Um, and so it's going to give you more than, um, it's going to give you more than, uh, it's going to give you lots of different options for backgrounds. And what I did for this is I simply added in dice for the different, for the combination of different numbers, right, that we might be working on to understand like that there's multiple ways that we can come to five, right, or there's, um, right, there's more than one way, like six can be two threes or, or a four and a two, right, there's different ways we can come to that. And then using it, with our Unifix cubes, we want active learning to be happening. So then using it with our Unifix cubes where students are building those combinations and that's using our, um, our themed mats. Let's see if we're here. All right, we're gonna click finish. Do not know why I'm having some issues with that, but let's go back in here and hopefully it'll all resolve itself today. We're gonna, we will, I promise we're gonna come back to seeing our, our spring counting cards um, our, not our spring counting cards, our spring playing cards. Um, and we'll get back to that. We're gonna give it, I'm gonna give it just a second for our lesson picks. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back over to my slide deck and then we'll come right back to it. Now, not just, uh, and again, math happens with things well beyond just those math templates. And so think creatively. We what our first session that we did of this series of three was on visual supports. Um, and we talked about visual schedules, but visual schedules are more than just um, a visual support for students to be able to transition from tasks. They also can be very mathematically related. So something like, how does a flower grow? What's the first thing? What's the second thing, the third? So working on those ordinal numbers, right? Um, following directions with that order, what we do first, what we do second, what we do third. These are really great mathematics activities. And these are things that are right linked in. Let's see if that comes up a little more quickly. Let's see what loads. We'll just get, we'll get it all loaded. It's gonna come back. I don't know why. Um, so things that we can do. Now, the other thing too is 
um, I love a good book. Uh, and we're keeping with the spring theme right here. Um, I love a good book. And um, there's so much math often involved in books that we read. And Lesson Picks has an amazing set of resources. And I'm hoping that we're not gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna try going over there and see if it takes us in to our in a story section of our website. Um, and I'll talk about it while hopefully it loads. Um, in our in a story section, we've got um, an always growing list of popular children's books, um, picture books. And within those articles on all of these picture books are a range of different resources to support instruction with those picture books. So it might be something, and again, thinking about those math or science oriented things, um, the book Spring Stinks, which is so cute, um, taking a springtime nature walk and talking about the things that you see, that you smell and that you hear. And then you could go in and you can graph those, right? How many things did we see? How many things did we smell? How many things did we hear? Which were more, right? Um, all of that, uh, along with lots of other, I talked about the idea that puzzle cards, right? Puzzle skills ultimately is part of our math skill set and in, in that visual perceptual um, understanding. And so that relates to that. I am still having issues with things um, loading up and logging, but that's all right. We're going to keep going. Um, speaking of those visual motor activities, do we have any OTs um, in the group today? Um, there are loads of visual motor activities that you can work on. And again, these are directly related to mathematics skills, um, those visual motor skills. Um, uh, and uh, so we've got things like our maze templates, and this is our um, cutting links template where it allows you to either cut or draw um, and connect uh, one thing to another. In this case, it's baby, it's uh, baby animals to mama animals. Okay, we're gonna try this one more time and see what is going on. I'm just gonna close that out for just a second and hopefully let's see what we're getting. All right, we'll keep going. Um, and then games, right? Games are in a wonderful way to work on math skills. Um, and so we've got about, oh, 50 different game templates or more in lesson picks, board game templates, bingo game templates, um, uh, game templates that allow you to adapt readily available off the shelf games like Zingo and Headbands and um, Guess Who. Um, but a simple board game is a wonderful way to work on math skills, right? We've got a um, roll a dice or spin a spinner to be able to advance in. And within Lesson Picks, we have digital spinners and dice available as well as custom spinners and dice that you can create. So let's see where this takes me that lets me get into our Hungry Caterpillar game. Um, and hopefully it's going to be coming on. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm having issues. Anybody else like on Lesson Picks right now having any issues um, with getting onto the website? Because I'm just thinking, is it me or is it, um, or is it Lesson Picks? Let's try. Re oh, no, see, it's fine right there. All right, let's get in. Let's go back in. I'm going to log into this really fast. So it could be. Um, who knows if it was my browser? There, see, things are working just fine right now. So let's go back into the Your Lesson Picks tab. That's where we're at. Here's our spring playing cards and look how cute these are. But what I really wanted to show you with this was how, right? So we've got our cards, right? So for working on counting, but then with it, it also gives us the operations. So you can use those cards as playing cards um, and have a set of playing cards with them, but you can also use them to work on some of those operations. So one Robin plus three butterflies equals how many? Um, you can make some multiple copies of this so you could have, uh, you could have more of those. So um, really fun with that, um, with having those operation signs. And you didn't have to do anything special. I didn't have to pull out those operation images and put them into a template. This automatically does that for you. I'm going to hop over here to something that I already had um, pulled up. And this is um, using our graphing template our, um, and uh, it allows you, so this was one where it's like you're graphing jelly beans, right? So you open a big bag of jelly beans and let's see how many are in the package, right? How many reds, how many blacks, how many greens, all of that. And working on those math skills, 
Um, I was speaking about operations for a minute and we've got, um, this is one of our themed templates. So in our themed um, mat, excuse me, in our themed mat template, um, there are the operations, the mathematics operations. And so what a great way to illustrate for a, um, a math word wall, what multiplication is, right? That these are all things that are related to, um, to that. And these are available in the sharing center, but you might come up with something different uh, that you're gonna use um, with that. Um, let's go back into those games. And so I'm gonna, um, I'm gonna head into that sharing center and let's find, uh, let's go, I'm gonna sort by the material type, right? So I'm gonna go to our, game boards and it's going to pull up some game boards and let's just find something uh let's just find something really really cute um oh look here spring is coming i have no idea i haven't looked at this before but here's a cute spring oriented one it's for our ticks so our our um, slps that are in here and wanting to integrate um um a few different things right seasonal math um, and um, and articulation and let's go ahead. now I can definitely download this as a PDF and print it out but let's just take a really quick look quick look at how easily I can download this into a, a PowerPoint and make this a digital activity I'm actually going to choose this PowerPoint fixed with tokens and let's save it in the right place and I'll explain exactly what that means PowerPoint fix with tokens. Let's open it all up in PowerPoint. There we go. Boop. Big. All right. So I've got my game. These are all words that start with um, the sound. Ooh. Now you might be using this for literacy. If you're a teacher, you might be using this art tech. If you are a um, speech language pathologist, um, but, um, it's a great, you know, we've got this now because I downloaded this, it's just, this is just, this is a slide, right? This is just a picture. That's the slide. Um, but on the side, cause I downloaded it with tokens, my friends can pick like, you know, what do they want? We're going to move from winter into spring. So what, uh, token, what game board piece, and those are all movable. And I'm just going to get rid of the extra ones, except I am going to keep I'm going to keep my magnifying glass. It's not actually a magnifying glass. Yes, you can do this exact same thing. Everything I'm going to show you that you can do right now in PowerPoint, you can do in Google Slides, Kim. You do have to import the Google, the PowerPoint into Google Slides. And I'll show you where you can find directions on how to do that. But I do like this little, right? So we can focus on like lip and like, right? Those pictures are small. Let's make them big, right? So we can I'm just... So I do like that, but I've got my, whoops, I got my two game board pieces so we can move. But let's look at how we can get that math piece into it. Cause right now it's just a language activity, a game activity, a social activity. Um, and I'm gonna show you our lesson picks PowerPoint add in. We have the exact same tool available in Google Slides. Um, and what it does, it allows me to log into my lesson picks account. can't like multitask and talk and type my password in at the same time. There we go. It allows me to log into my lesson picks account right inside PowerPoint. Same thing in Google Slides. When I do, I'm actually can see all the images in my tray, which have nothing to do with this activity. So it's fine. That doesn't actually matter. I'm heading over to these play tools. I could use a spinner, but let's use a dice. Let's go for a dice. And I don't want the images in the tray. I want either numbers or dots. Let's go with dots. I'm going to stick with one dice. But I could, it, because this is not a very complex game, right? But if I had a more complex game or if I was working on something else, I might want more than one dice, but I don't want to get through the game too fast. So I'm going to keep it at one dice. I'm going to click create game and my student can roll the dice. I really love this because we could set it up even for a student who needs switch access. We could set that up so that we've got the mouse positioned and that the switch click is their mouse, uh, is a mouse click so that that student with a physical disability would be able to really participate actively in this activity. So what we've rolled a three, this is where the math is coming in. They've got to know that, you know, those three dots equals three, what they're working on. Then we've got to be able to translate that out to counting this, right? One, 
two, three. If I'm the speech language pathologist, I'm going to be probably having them practice that L sound. If I'm the classroom teacher, we might be talking about what letter does that word start with. Lie starts with L, L right? Mon starts with L, loud starts with L. So we can get to a lot of different skills with this. All right, I'm just going to minimize this and um, see if we can get back into my slide deck and we'll just see. See, there we are. Now things are working just fine. Um, but again, so many different games that we could create. Now, let's not forget about communication. And I know I'm a, I've am hit my 1230 mark. Um, and I know some of you may just be here for the um, for the half hour. But if you've got folks, usually Naomi gives me a few minutes longer to go. Um, so if you can stick around, please do. Don't forget about communication. Um, blocks is an incredibly important math uh, developer a math skill developer. And it is, we take away blocks way too early in school. We look at blocks as preschool, they go away in kindergarten, um, or, you know, maybe sometimes we keep them in kindergarten, but really there are block skills that go all the way up. Um, think about anybody that, any adult that uses Legos, how complex the math and science and problem solving is around that. So don't forget about blocks with older kids as well. And don't forget about that communication. So being able to have that communication board so you can really talk about that. Um, thanks you, Naomi. Um, and so just, you know, reminder not to do that. Now, um, I'm going to make sure I hit, I want to hit, make sure I hit everything. Ah, this is where I kind of got a little bit lost before, before I talk about um, the very end. This is that um, in a story section of the website where we've got, for this one, it's the book Spring um, stinks. So we've got our finger puppets or our, excuse me, our stick puppets, vocabulary that goes around it, comprehension cards, story sequencing. There we get into some of that, right? We get into some of those ordinal numbers with those. These are those same themed mats, but with this, they did it for our tick, right? But that same flower themed mats where they would do it. Some writing activities, we're talking about math. Um, so let's head on down to where I know we've got some math. And here's those clothespin counting cards, but this time aligned um, with the vocabulary from um, Spring Stinks. And for many, many more um, picture books with related activities, just go straight to the in a story section. While I'm here, I do wanna point out under our tutorials, that I had said that if you um, wanted to know how to do what I showed you in PowerPoint um, and in Google Slides, there's um, articles here on how to use lesson picks in PowerPoint and how to use lesson picks in Google Slides with our Google Slides add-on, along with lots more resources above and beyond um, what we are you know, talking about uh, today. So, um, you know, things that we've talked about in, in the past um, in terms of, of um, literacy and different features in lesson picks. Um, so these are really great resources that in a story section and those tutorials section. Um, I'm going to show everybody um, it, so that anybody that has to leave doesn't, uh, doesn't, feel like they're not getting all of the information. I do wanna just let everyone know a little bit about our group licensing information. So as I said, it's $36 a year for an individual license. And that's a license that one person uses. For our group licensing, when you hit 10 people in a group, we provide a 10% discount off of that individual licensing. When you hit 25, you get a 15% discount. And when you hit 100 plus licenses, you get a 20% discount. With our larger groups, we are also now offering um, single sign-on options. So if you use Clever or Google or whatever your single sign-on in your school district is to make it easier um, for um, uh, logging in, like not having to log in every time um, for those individuals, it's connected directly to their school login. We have that now as well as along with some other um, options for our larger groups for managing um, your district accounts. I want to make sure everybody sees that we do have a um, the option here today for if you are not a Lesson Pick subscriber and you want to take a little bit of time in order to explore it. 
um, before making a decision about purchasing. Um, that link that I just put in the chat, and it's also in the slide deck, um, is going to give you uh, access to a free two-month trial of lesson picks. Um, we also offer free trainings for groups. We will do in-person if it's something that is local or you wanna pay for our transportation out there, um, but we will also always do free virtual training. So if your school district, your, um, your agency purchases group licenses, we will provide customized group training for you as well. Um, so uh, I want to make sure folks have a moment to ask any questions that they may have. Um, I've got 1236, so we're not too far over our time at all. Um, but I want to make sure um, folks have a moment to ask any questions that they have about what I showed you or anything about lesson picks. And while we're doing that, I'm going to hop into the sharing center. So while you're organizing your thoughts, um, if you want to come on mic, just interrupt me if you're organizing your thoughts and putting it in um, uh, the chat, give you a moment to organize your thoughts, but I want to show in the sharing center how easy it is to find math resources. Um, the first easy way to do that is to go under curriculum and instruction and go under mathematics. And you're going to find resources that other people have created that they have shared. So everything from, we've got like a math communication board here. It looks like some different math matching activities. We've got that spring math, right? Um, picture cards with showing different ways that numbers might be represented. Oh, one of my favorite templates is our number cards, which you can create those puzzles, right? So this is this is a really creative way to talk about counting up, adding one more. One more from one gives you two. One more from two gives you. This is adorable. I love it when people stuff in the sharing center gives me really great ideas. Now, if I wanted to know how could I remake, I can simply download this and print it and it's good to go. But if I wanted to maybe remake this, maybe I wanted different images in there. I can see right here, the material type is that it's a puzzle card. That's the template that's used um, for this. And somebody just got super creative with it. They made a whole bunch of custom images, um, but I can steal those. Oh, let me show you, right? Maybe I don't want it as puzzles. Maybe I want it as like, um, um, a playing card activity or flashcards or something like that, right? I can actually take those images that were in this. I can load them up in my tray. Look at that. They're all in my tray now. And now I can create my own resource with this. So maybe what I want is, I'm trying to think what I might, you know, maybe I'm going to make a book about this. Maybe we're going to have just a really simple book about one more then just as a way of introducing it. So maybe I'm gonna make a book or story about that. Um, so let's go ahead and do that, right? Um, so I'm gonna, right, I could just go in, I could add the text there. Um, um, one more than two is, right? And we would, or one more than one. One more than one is, I sit and figure out what I'm doing here. One more than two is, right? One more than two is, so one more than one is two. One more than two is three. One more than three is, so you guys get the idea how I can take something and remake it um, and use images that somebody else used in one of their resources. I'm gonna stop talking for a minute in case anybody wants to come on mic and say something. And if not, I'll go back into the sharing center for a moment and just share a few more. I'm gonna hit my back button. Just share a few more of those math resources that I might go searching for. Somebody's got a shapes counting cards one. These are some great, I just love seeing everybody else's creative ideas. This person has been really busy, right? This KK22. By the way, when you see somebody else's resources and lesson picks and you're like, that person is so clever and you see them in the sharing center and you want to see all the cool stuff they've done, if I just click on their username, it's going to take me to everything that they have chosen to share in the sharing center. So if I really love what this person is doing, I can easily get to um, different resources that they've created. So they've got like a subitizing to five picture cards. They've done lots of like nice math work. Um, again, if I go back under curriculum and instruction and filter by math, 
it's going to give me loads and loads of different resources. I can also filter by material type, right? So if I want to go down to um, those, where do they go? So under early literacy is actually where those themed maths are. But like I said, you might use those for um, mathematics, not just for literacy activities. So there's that, those flower towers and the butterfly tower, um, super easy to be able. Um, and again, if I really loved that butterfly tower, I mean, that flower tower, like with those dice, it's clear what's in my tray, um, but I wanted to put it in a different, right? Maybe we're not quite ready for the flowers yet. I can just load all those pictures. And again, that was just to work on different uh, number sense understanding that there's different ways that I can make up different numbers and I can hit that create materials and I can make anything else with it. If I wanted to make a different themed mat, I can go under those themed mats and let's go here and see what else I've got. It all looks good. I'm not going to do anything with it. Um, let's see what one we want. So maybe what I wanted was Oh, a nest. That would be another good. Um, that would be another good spring one. It's only going to let me use ten pictures as the max for that particular one. Some allow you to have more. Um, so counting, counting towers, eggs in a nest. Right. So super easy for me to be able um, to to set that up. Um, I can finish that. Any questions? I just want to give you guys one more chance to ask questions before we wrap up today. So please take advantage of the free two month trial. If you have not used lesson picks before, um, please make sure you get the link to the slides so that you've got um, all of the information and links to lots of different resources in there. Um, uh, and Naomi, thank you so much for inviting me once again um, to share Lesson Picks resources um, with folks in New Jersey and well beyond. And everybody have a great afternoon.